Hello everyone, welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let us discuss the daily quiz for 10th February. The first question, we can see there are three schemes given on the left hand side and their objectives are mentioned on the right hand side. Now if you see on the left hand side, the first scheme is National Food Security Mission Oil Seeds and Oil Palm. The second one is National Mission on Edible Oils Oil Palm. And the third one is Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana Raftar. And of course, the objectives are given on the right hand side. Now, let me change the color for black. Okay. Now, see, the government of India has started these schemes. And these are central schemes. Or I would say centrally sponsored schemes. Now, the first one that you are seeing here. This is basically to augment the availability of edible oils by increasing the production and productivity of nine oil seed crops and area expansion under oil farm. So the first one, the objective of this is here. Now if you come to the second one, National Mission on Edible Oils or Oil Palm. Now this is to promote oil palm cultivation for making the country Atnirbhar in edible oils with special focus on northeastern states and Andaman and Nicobar by increasing area of oil palm. So this should have gone over there. And the third one, the Raftar scheme, is basically provision for crop production related activities on oil seeds. So what we have done is, you can see clearly the answer to this question becomes D, all the three objectives and the schemes they are incorrectly matched objectives are there so for one it should have been c for two it should have been a and for three it should have been b then it would have been correct so this is a news that came today on pib as you can see the steps to increase production of oil seeds and edible oil moving ahead let's move to the question number two Consider the following statements about high altitude pseudo satellite HAPS technology. The first one HAPS vehicles can operate at altitudes of 18 to 20 kilometers above the ground, which is nearly twice the cruising altitude of commercial aeroplanes. Airplanes. Number two, they can remain airborne for months or even years due to the ability to generate solar power. Number third, the operational cost of HAPS is significantly lower than that of traditional satellites because they do not require a rocket for deployment into space. Now, please understand, again, in the uh, Indian Express, this article has come that the National Aerospace Laboratory in Bengaluru has successfully completed the first test of this solar powered HAPS technology pseudo satellite. Now, as you can see here, the first statement says that this is at altitude of this above the ground, which is nearly twice the cruising altitude. Now, many people might have got confused that can they operate at such a high distance or uh, sorry, uh, your height? Absolutely correct. This is correct. So 1 is correct, B is wrong. Now we have given the second statement also that they can remain airborne for months or even years due to their ability to generate solar power. Again, it appears to be a very far-fetched idea but then this is also a correct statement. So this was wrong. And the third one, again the operational cost of this is lower than that of traditional satellites because they don't require a rocket for deployment into space. That's also a correct statement. All three of them are correct. So this is a very, very, I would say, ground-breaking technology, a skill-developing technology. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, its successful test flight has put India in a group of very few countries who have this technology. Now, where was this all flight test carried out? Please remember, in uh, Chitradurg district, Chitradurg district of Karnataka, where the prototype of this uh, UAV was tested recently. So this is a news item, as you can see, has come in Indian Express on 10th February 2024. Moving ahead to the third question. 
which of the following statements is are correct regarding the India's semiconductor mission? First, the mission aims to make India self-reliant in semiconductor manufacturing and reduce its dependency on imports. Point number two, financial incentives are provided only for semiconductor fabrication plants under the ISM. Third, the ISM mainly focuses on the manufacturing aspect of semiconductors and not on research and development. And fourth, collaboration with global semiconductor companies, research institutions and governments is a key, key component of the ISM to foster technology transfer and investment. Now, see these types of questions, if you know, you know, otherwise you need to find some clues. Now, if I see a clue, I get one clue with the word only. Do you think that the financial incentives would be provided only for semiconductor fabrication plants? No, it is provided for other purposes also. So point number two is wrong is the answer. That means third is also wrong. Again, if you see, the ISM mainly focuses on the manufacturing aspect of semiconductors, but not on R&D. All of you think, do you think ever it would be that such a big mission would not focus on R&D? That's never going to happen. So, your, this statement was also wrong. Of course, 1 and 4 are correct. That's why your option is A. So, if you understand here, we are trying to create a semiconductor ecosystem in India. For this, we are providing good amount of financial support to companies that are investing in semiconductors. They are displaying manufacturing as well as design ecosystem. All that is being done from our side. So the answer to this question is A. Moving to the fourth question. Uh, this was the article again in the Indian Express which has come recently. You can see recently in the sense 10th February only, today only. Coming to the fourth question. Which of the following facts about CRTIN are correct? Certain. Certain is a functional organization under Ministry of Home Affairs with the objective of securing Indian cyberspace. It prevents cyber attacks against the country's space and according to IT Amendment Act 2024, will also raise security awareness amongst Indian citizens. Now again, which are correct. Now let me tell you, one is wrong because it's not under the Ministry of Home Affairs, but rather it is under the Ministry of Electronics and IT. Now, many people might get confused. Okay, maybe cyberspace also comes under Home Affairs, but that's wrong. One is wrong. These two are wrong. What about two? It prevents cyber attacks against the company's space, or oh, sorry, country's space. And according to IT Amendment 2024, now, this is wrong. This is, there is no IT Amendment Act here that happened in 2024. So this statement is also wrong. They do prevent the cyber attacks against any of the, you know, things that are happening in our space. And they have been raising the, security awareness amongst our citizens from very beginning. That's one of the objectives of this particular program or this, uh, uh, I would say, body which is attached to your Ministry of Electronics and IT. Even today, they had given a warning to all the users who were using Google Chrome that it is very vulnerable to attacks. So the fourth question, the answer is D. Moving ahead. A PYQ from 2018, a factual question in the Federation established by GUI Act 1935, residuary powers were given to D. A factual question, Governor General, you all must have studied GUI Act 1935, which was a very, very important document at that point. And even after independence became a very important document because half of our constitution has been borrowed from this particular act. And... In this, residuary powers were given to Governor General. What is residuary power? Either you have a union list or you have a state list, you have a concurrent list. Apart from this, anything which is not mentioned in these three lists, they come under the residuary powers. Now, giving the residuary powers to the Governor General clearly indicates that they want the center to be much more powerful. That's from the question number five. Let us come to the fact of the day. Fact of the day is about the Asian Development Bank, which was established on 19 December 1966 with the purpose of 
fostering economic growth and cooperation in the India Pacific, sorry, Asia Pacific region. Headquarter is in Mali, uh, Philippines, Manila. Membership around 68 countries, 49 of them from Asia Pacific region. Some of the biggest shareholders include Japan, USA, China, India, Australia, and you can see its mission also. That's a very important bank. And apart from this, these are the other works that they are doing. You can see their financial instruments, what they do, like they provide the loans, they give technical assistance. Apart from that, their focus areas, they focus in education, health infrastructure, work for climate change, you know, that, you know, mitigate the climate change. They want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. They work for disaster responses and do publish extensive research. They do on economic and development issues related to policy and thus informing the policy makers and stakeholders. Now, in the morning in CNA, one thing I had missed was the two main questions. So I have brought those two here. In your opinion, has the role of USA declined at the global level? Comment in 150 words. Number two, the preamble is the philosophical key to the constitution. Examine this statement. Comment it in 250 words. If you like these initiatives, do like, subscribe and comment on them. And we shall again meet again tomorrow in another session. With that, I'm saying thank you. Goodbye.